So, those of you who, have, who attend my programs regularly, I have said this so many times. The material existence is like a dream. And throughout the Uddhava Gita, Krishna repeats that over and over again. Material existence is a dream. And for most people, they can't accept it. It's too much. But those who accept Bhagavatam, they get it. And earlier in the fourth canto, Prabhupada has this one little extra verse. The secret teachings of the Vedas, the material world is a dream. We won't go any further because that would be another seven day saptaha. Okay. So Uddhava begs for instructions about how to become renounced. And Krishna tells the story of Yadu, his forefather, how he approached an avaduta. And the avaduta said, Oh, you can have for yourself 24 gurus. And he explains how the earth is his guru, the mountain, the tree, the wind, sky, water, fire, moon, river, the sun. All of these, the Avaduta says, I have learned some. They're my guru. And then he goes on. Even the pigeon, the python, the ocean, the moth, honeybee, elephant, honey hunter, deer, and fish. They're also my guru. And then the prostitute. There's even a story here how a prostitute is his guru. And there's even a song of the prostitute. Yes. Then the hawk, the child, bracelets, arrow maker, snake, spider, wasp, and body. Abhaduta says, I have learned from all of these 24 gurus. Then, next section, Krishna's perfect knowledge. Next item, the defect of fruitive activities. And then, Krishna explains the quote from Bhagavad Gita, Shine Punye Marcha Lokam Vishanti, meaning, let's say you go to the heavenly planets. And Krishna in this section says, yes, you heard me say this before. You are riding on your own airplane and you have these beautiful damsels chanting your name. Nimai Jaran. Nimai. And they're fanning you and you're in your own airplane. These beautiful women are glorifying you. Then all of a sudden, when it's time, you fall head first back down to earth. You come crashing down. There's no notice. It's like, uh, 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 boom. So that's the defect. You can go to the heavenly planets for a vacation, but at some point, back to Irvine and start again. Then the next section, Krishna explains Bhagavad Gita 13.22. Here's the verse. Purusha Prakriti Stohi Bhunkte Prakriti Jan Gunan Karanam Gunasangosya Sarasad Yoni Janmasu Please repeat The living entity In material nature Thus follows the ways of life Enjoying the three modes of nature This is due to association With that material nature Thus one meets with good and evil among various species. So again, it all comes down to you're trying to enjoy the material world and as soon as you take on that kind of mentality, then you can expect good things are going to happen, bad things. You give up this mentality of trying to enjoy, now you're liberated because you see yourself, I'm not enjoyer, I'm servant of Krishna. Next section. Krishna's concise answer 
on Jiva Kosha. Jiva Kosha means the living entity entangled, imprisonment, actually imprisonment. So what does it say? Please repeat. The living entity called Jiva is part and parcel of me. That sounds like something I've heard in Bhagavad Gita. Chapter 15. Mamai Bangso Jiva Loke. Jiva Bhuta Sanatana. So that's what I said. Many things in this Uddhava Gita are the same things he says in Bhagavad Gita. Please repeat. Is part and parcel of me. But due to ignorance, one has been suffering. In material bondage since time immemorial meaning you can never trace out when you fell neither you should worry about it all you should know is yes I have fallen here I am in this material world I'm falling now the solution is get out if there's all of a sudden a fire in your room you get out you call the fire department, you get out. First, you save yourself. So the same way, we're in the blazing fire of material existence. First, get out. Go back to Godhead, and if you want, then you can ask Krishna, Krishna, how did I fall? Don't try to figure it out now. But the thing is, once you go back home, back to Godhead, you won't bother Krishna asking why you fell. In the same way, Say you have a bad dream. When you wake up from the bad dream, you go, oh, it was only a dream. Then you forget about the dream, right? Because you realize it was a dream. This material existence is a dream. When you go back to Godhead, you'll go, oh, it was a dream. I'm back. Okay, hurry, bowl. Let's go. You won't care. Please repeat. But by knowledge... One can be liberated. That is Kamlesh's main preaching point. Knowledge, knowledge, no am I right? I know you for so many years. He stresses this point. Study. But what should they study? Bhagavad Gita first. Once you know Bhagavad Gita, then what should you study? Srimad Bhagavatam. And Minakshi Vrajarani. You have done this. You've gone through Bhagavatam. What did you do next? Chaitanya Charitamrita. Then after that, Brahma Sanghita. Then after that, come see me. <laughs> I'll guide you accordingly. All right. Next section. Symptoms of conditioned and liberated living entities. Then, two birds in a tree. Krishna gives this analogy from the Upanishads. Two birds sitting in the tree. One bird just enjoying. The other bird going from branch to branch, tasting the different fruits. So the tree, the body. The bird that's just satisfied, that's Krishna, Paramatma. The other bird going from branch to branch, you and me. But pro the problem is, there's only two fruits of the tree. Happiness, distress. So sometimes we're happy, sometimes we're distressed. Because that's the only options you get in this material life. Take your choice. Happiness, distress. Then, Krishna's definition of a saintly person. Krishna's explanation of practical devotional service. Practical devotional service means it's not just theoretical. You have to execute so many different functions. You have to act in such a way. Devotional service is an activity. It's not just a mental state. No. You have to act. You have to work. Just like, say, a, a man and woman come together to get married. So after the marriage, they just don't say, okay, we're married. No, they do things. So in the same way, when you get knowledge, you have to apply the knowledge. That's practical. You have to apply it. 
Then, Krishna explains the importance of developing the mode of goodness. Why? Because our real goal is to come to the spiritual platform. But in passion and ignorance, it's virtually impossible. But in the mode of goodness, now you have a chance to rise to the spiritual platform. But if you stay in passion and ignorance, good luck. Say you're in a pool. You don't, you're not able just to jump out of the pool and land on the dry. It doesn't work that way. You have to climb up the stairs out of the pool. Nobody comes out of the, okay, I'm just going to come out. It's impossible. So you cannot go to the spiritual plane remaining in passion and ignorance. You got to come to the mode of goodness. Then, Krishna's explanation of the actual yoga system. Not this hot yoga, cold yoga, beer yoga. Every day they have a new yoga. Pot yoga. Every day there's a new one. No, this is the actual yoga system. Then, another incarnation. Hangsa avatar. Krishna appeared to Brahma and the four Kumaras in the form of a swan. And there's a conversation. And the swan incarnation answers the questions of Brahma and the four Kumaras. Then, the super excellent happiness of Krishna's pure devotee. The devotee enjoys, but the devotee enjoys transcendental happiness. Okay. Then, the purifying process of thinking of Krishna. So just by thinking of Krishna, you become purified. Then, Krishna's explanation of mystic meditation. Krishna's description of mystic yoga perfection. There are 18 mystic yoga perfections. They're all material, but you get certain perfections. Become smaller than the smallest. To become bigger than the biggest. To become lighter than the lightest. To become heavier than the heaviest. All the demons that Krishna killed, some of them had those mystic powers. But again, they're all material. And that's why Krishna was, it's easy for Krishna to defeat them. Next section. The Lord's unlimited opulence. What name of Krishna means unlimited? Ananta. Everybody say. Then the next section. Krishna's description of Varnashram, Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaisha, Shudra, Brahmachari, uh, Grihastha, Vanaprastha, Sanyas. Those are the eight, Varna Asram. So Krishna explains that. And then he gives the conclusion. The conclusion, devotional service. The conclusion is always devotional service. Then, in three parts, the perfection of spiritual knowledge. So, you can go to university, you will get material knowledge. Nothing wrong with that, provided you use it to serve Krishna. Just like Kamlesh, he knows about computers, but with your computer knowledge, what do you do? You preach, right? So, whatever material facilities you have, Use it to preach. Me, what do I have? A big mouth. So I use my big mouth to preach. If you are expert in anything, fine. Use it to serve Krishna. Vedavit, you must be expert in dealing with people. Therefore, you're using it to distribute books. If you're expert in making money, spend for Krishna. Build temples, purchase books, give to devotees. Use your money for Krishna. Hold festivals. Then, next thing. Pure devotional service surpasses knowledge and detachment. Then, Krishna's explanation of the Vedic path. Then, also, yatamat tatapat. 
That's the phrase of Vivekananda. As many paths, as many ways. But the real explanation of that is given by Krishna to Uddhava. Then, different views on the material elements. Sometimes you hear there are 24, but Krishna says actually you can see it in terms of nine and different ways of analyzing. Comes up with different numbers. Next one. False ego is the cause of duality and illusion. What is false ego? I am the enjoyer. I am man. I am woman. I am Americano. I am Hindu. These are all false ego. Real ego is I'm Krishna's eternal servant. That's real, pure ego. Anything else, it's false. Then there's the story of the Avanti Brahmana. He was a miser, complete miser. So much so, his own family despised him. He wouldn't even spend his wealth with his family members. So at some point, he lost everything. Okay, by, by tricks of nature, he lost everything. So he took sannyas. But once he took sannyas, all his karma came back to him. People would taunt him. They would take his prayer beads and dangle them. Ah, look. People would spit on him and urinate on him. But he tolerated, tolerated, tolerated. And there's one final statement. The next section the song of the Avanti Brahman. That song, the final verse, is what Iskan Sannyasis chant as their eighth Gayatri. Those of you who are Iskan Brahmins, you have seven mantras when you chant Gayatri. When you're a Sannyasi, you get an eighth one. And that eighth one is, I will cross over the ocean of material existence simply by taking shelter of Krishna's lotus feet. And I will use my body, mind, and words to surrender to Krishna. Everybody chant the Maha Mantra. Okay, Uddhava Gita continues. Krishna's scientific analysis of creation and annihilation. That's called Sankhya. We heard Sankhya from a previous incarnation. Who was that? Kapil. Very good. Excellent. Then, next section. Bhagavad Gita revisited the gunas. In chapter 14, in chapter 17 and 18, Krishna explains the modes of nature. So here, in Uddhava Gita, we revisit those gunas. But, as I said, from a more different angle of vision. Then, Krishna's conclusion regarding the three modes. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna, Arjuna asks Krishna the question, how do I transcend the modes? Krishna's response, Mang chayo vyabicharena bhakti yogena sevate sagunan samatit yaitan brahma buyaya kalpate how do you transcend the modes? Devotional service, 24, 7, 52, 100. Just always be engaged, hearing, chanting, remembering, praying, worshiping, preaching, writing about Krishna, or in your case, broadcasting Krishna. So, Kamlesh, you could have your computers running 24 hours. You do. It's always good to praise the host. Then you know you're going to get invited back. <laughs> I know my tricks of the trade. Some people object. Narantara, why are you always praising this guy, this guy? I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this for over 25 years. I'm expert now. And I'm humble. Okay? Next section. Krishna's purport on Sadhu Sangha. 
This is Sadhu Sangha. We're associating with devotees. So Krishna recommends that. Then, Pururava's blues. We didn't talk about it, but in the ninth canto, there is the story of Urvashi and Puruvara. So Puruvara was an earthly king, and Urvashi was a heavenly damsel. But it was arranged that this earthly king could consort with Urvashi. But there was some conditions and he broke the conditions and Urvashi said goodbye. And Puruvara cried and cried, I want Urvashi. And Urvashi came back and said, stop talking like a whining baby. You should know better. And I don't want to get into it because it's kind of heavy. But that was in the, and Kamlesh told me, don't do anything controversial. But you said in temples, right? So it's okay here. Anyway, Krishna goes back to that story of Puruvara because he's emphasizing how Puruvara was so attached to Urvashi that he practically was dying. But then he realized, I got to get out of this Maya. So he became detached. So Krishna's revisiting that saying, by detachment, you become liberated from all anxiety. Oh, look at this next section. Krishna's instructions on the process of deity worship. You hear people say, oh, this deity worship, this is a concoction. No. Look at, it's right here in the Uddhava Gita. Krishna himself tells us how he should be worshipped in the deity form. So it's not a concoction. It's based on scripture. Okay? Then the next section. Brahma Satyam Jagan Mitya. The material world is temporary, illusory. The spiritual world, truth. Next, ah, my favorite. Life is but a dream. This theme keeps coming in the Uddhava Gita. Your material life is a dream. So that's what I do. When I watch the TV and I see that guy, I don't want to mention his name, then I realize, oh, it's just a dream. Don't worry about it. He'll soon be gone. Please, Krishna. How to conquer yoga impediments. Yes, in yoga, there are impediments. Krishna tells you how to conquer. Then Uddhava praises the greatness of Krishna. And then the principles of devotion to Krishna. Then the benedictions of the Uddhava Gita. Nice. Throughout Bhagavatam, so many places, after reading the narration, you get a benediction. Like yesterday, I told the story of Putana. At the end of the, I didn't mention it, but at the end of the Putana narration, Shukadeva Goswami says, anyone who hears this narration about Putana gets firm devotion to the lotus feet of Govinda. So just by reading sections of the Bhagavatam, you get blessings. And then look at this. Uddhava goes back to Godhead. So after Krishna went back, after some time, Uddhava also went back to Godhead. Uddhava ki jai. Here is the narration. Listen. Placing the Lord deeply within his heart, the great devotee Uddhava went to Badarik Ashram. By engaging in austerities, he attained the Lord's personal abode, which had been described to him by the only friend of the universe, Lord Krishna himself. Jagat Bandhu, right? Friend of the universe. Jagat Bandhu. The 11th canto ends with part 3 of the Maushala Leela. What happened? So, we heard in part 1 that the sages cursed the Yadu dynasty saying, this girl that you've dressed up to look pregnant with an iron club, that will be the cause of your destruction. King Ugrasena had the club filed down and there were heaps and heaps of iron filings. 
They went to the bank of the ocean or river and grew into reeds. And the little lump that was left over was swallowed by a fish. The fish was captured by a hunter. And when he opened the fish up, he saw the lump and he made an arrow. Now we pick up. So after Krishna found out about the curse of the Brahmins, Krishna gathered everybody and said, we have to do something to nullify the curse of the Brahmins. So Krishna said, let's go to this place, Prabhas Shetra. We will worship the demigods, we will do austerities, and we'll try to negate the curse of the Brahmins. So because they're Kshatriyas, in a particular sacrifice, there is a part of the sacrifice where you're allowed to drink this kind of liquor made from rice. But you're only supposed to take a little. Not that... You're supposed to take a little because they're Kshatriyas. But what happened? They all started to drink too much. And by drinking too much, they became intoxicated and they started to joke. You're not a Kshatriya. You're a Shudra. And then the other guy would say, Who are you calling a Shudra? So they were joking with each other, tit for tat. But then it became more heated. And they really started, yeah, I know about you. You did this, you did. So it became.